Let's go. What is up, Chad? It's good to see you on the technically this is like the first legitimate episode of Goodnight Griper, and, but it's kind of the second because I uploaded on Gab TV the Gavin McInnes interview as this. But tonight we are joined by a good friend of mine. Uh, I have some notes here, sort of sum up who he is, even though I'm sure all of you already know. Um, Tyler Russell, mostly known for Canada First, streamed here on Cozy.tv, but also a major right-wing political activist in Canada. He is an Ottawa trucker protest veteran and is also Yes, Tyler. How are you, my man? How are you? And you're still uh, muted. You're still yeah. muted. <laughs> oh, there we go. How's it going on? <laughs> nice to see you, Dalton. Good to Thanks see you, man. Me, man. It's great to be here. It's great to be here. It was also it was great to meet you at AFPAC as well. That was a pleasant surprise. Yes, for the very first time we got to meet. Yeah, you picked me up. <laughs> Takes me to his Porsche. I was like, damn, dude, this is what's going on. All right. So this is sort of an interview style show, which I find very interesting because I know you, but I don't know why you are involved in America First. I don't know why you do your show. I don't know what motivates you. I don't know if you prefer content creation over politics or politics over content creation. Sort of like asking questions that I don't think many people get asked about selves. You know what I mean? If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It sounds good to me. It sounds like a pretty sick concept. Yeah, dude, I'm hyped for it. You rocking the America First hat? Got your new one or I what? I am, man. I was going to wear the Canada First hat, but I'm down in Mexico right now, as you <laughs> probably know. Yeah. So I thought, you know, America is closer to Mexico than Canada. So okay. okay. I went with the America First hat. And this is something that I'm, I'm genuinely interested in, is how did you get involved in America First? How did you learn about Nick Fuentes? What was your what was your awakening back when Trump won? I was completely, you know, apolitical. I couldn't care less about politics. I was actually into music. I was a DJ. I've seen the you know, I could, Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I could care less about politics, dude. And then um, Trump just kind of energized me. It was exciting. And he brought, you know, to attention all these very important issues that, you know, we have to face kind of my introduction and then after that i got into jordan peterson and ben shapiro and milo and gavin of course. <laughs> and the uh, pipeline. You know, all of the sjw's owned videos and all that good stuff the pipeline then, is so um, real dude it truly is it really <laughs> is and then i found faith goldie and you know faith goldie is from canada she was working at sun news and then she worked for rebel news and then she went to Charlottesville, of course, went to all of her mayor campaign stuff. I think that I found Nick early 2018. I came across like one of his compilations, like his Nick Fuentes go off moment. Let's go. I fell in love with the whole movie. That's the guy right there. That's the guy that's gonna save the world. So. What year was this? When, when was this? Early 2018. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Sick. That's awesome. Yeah, I had a similar experience. I got griped though. I got bullied. <laughs> People just were sending me America First Out Live. I was not aware of, of Nick and the Gripers. What'd you think of the event? I gotta ask. Oh, it was so sick. Like, it was one of these events that you're never going to forget for the rest of your life, you know? Just like meeting everybody. Of course, meeting Gavin and Milo, you know, seeing Michelle and all those people is awesome. But just seeing like the absolute support from like 1,200 Groifers there was like insane. When we were going to like the washroom, everybody, you know, wants to shake your hand. Everybody wants to, you know, say hi and stuff. And it's like, we have like the best grassroots movement here. Like people yeah. are dedicated, yeah. dude. Then you feel you like know? a rock star. You felt like, I felt like a fucking rock star. I'm not even gonna lie. We were talking about this last sure. night. About how fucking cool it was. To the, like, yeah. people like, like chanting your name and you're walking around shaking hands and taking pictures. It was really surreal. Never experienced anything like it, dude. Same here. Gonna try and get some better lighting. Oh, look at that. What lighting. a handsome guy. What a handsome I just, guy. I'm never going to forget. No, it's only going to grow. It's only going to grow and grow and grow. There's nothing that Joe Kent or any of these other retards can do about it. Speaking, yeah, speaking of Joe Kent. The Nationalist Dog is here. Let's go! Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, dude. Bailey. You know, I got a Cocker Spaniel. Let's go. His name's Tucker, Carl Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson, I like it. <laughs> Found Nick through one of those compilation videos, like a lot of people 
dead. But what was your moment when you realized I want to do Canada first? I want to make content that is sort of helping the movement, but also in my own country that I care about. Oh, I was lurking for like quite a while because I started my first live stream called The Russell Report um, early 2020. The moment was when the election that I participated in happened. It was like mid 2019. That was the first election that Maxine Bernie and the BBC were in. I was volunteering for a candidate named Greg Wycliffe, who is a fantastic friend of mine. He's CF now, great content creator. Being involved in that political process, it was something that was very cool to me. You know, that was probably the first time. And during that election too, it was my first run-in with Antifa left. And you know, I've seen the left before and you know, I've been up to you know, various other protests before where the left had been present and you know, I've seen all the videos about them. But that was the first time I was actually confronted by Antifa. And I just love that energy of like, these guys are oh! fucking enemies and they're here and they're, you know, yelling at Max. At that time too, the Proud Boys were not a terrorist organization up in Canada. Crazy, by the way. I didn't know that. You told yeah. me on when we were in AFPAC. Proud Boys a terrorist organization, chat. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. And back in 2019, they worked. So they were like working security for Maxine Bernie at this rally. <laughs> <laughs> like hanging out with the Proud Boys. Back then, not now. Nope. I don't talk to them now. Yeah. But back then, it was like... There is a difference, too, between the Canadian and the American Proud Boys. You know, I don't really know Gavin's opinion on this. It seems like the Canadian Proud Boys are, like, less gay, you know? They're more, like, good old boys from, like, Alberta. I was an American Proud Boy. You calling me gay? American Proud Boys are a little bit gay, you gotta admit. Yeah, there were, <laughs> yeah, there were a couple of gay ones, probably. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. True. How'd that happen? Well, well, I made a bunch of connections during that election. It's like various PPC candidates, people involved within politics. And I made the decision that up in Canada, it's much like, you know, down south in, in the States. It's like you either, you know, take the trip and you get a job with the Conservative Party, or you can become a dissident and, you know, do the right thing and you have more autonomy to do kind of what you want and say whatever you want. That's what I saw within the PPC. So I decided to go that route. You know, trust me, I could have joined the CPC. You know, I could have got an internship. I was actually an intern and I've, I've, told, I've told this story before, but um, I was a little bit undercover. When I first started my first show, The Russell Report, I was an intern for Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland, which is the second in command next to Justin Trudeau. You know, I was like doing the Russell <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. look at the top and of his head. And one of my paired up with like an MP in our area and just so happened to be that I got paired up with Christia fucking Freeland. So I just didn't say anything. I just kept my, my I just kept my mouth shut. Holy <laughs> shit. I'll, I'll never forget just going there the very first day and they were getting me set up like in her like database and of course you know I have like well back then it was uh, live back then I had like D live bookmarked and I had Infowars bookmarked and like you know all these like wild things bookmarked manager at her office is on my laptop you know setting it up it's like she obviously knew I mean there's no way that she couldn't after seeing those bookmarks right so yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of funny. And then, you know, around that same time when I started my show, a couple months after that is when I got fired from my job, um, for opposing Black Lives Matter. And then there was a big petition, you know, try to get me expelled from my school. But that was like the defining moment where I'm like, okay, this isn't just like, you know, some kind of political hobby anymore. This is my life and I'm going to give everything to it. And from that Black Lives Matter moment on, it was like, every day can to first you know we're grinding out here we're hustling so it is super weird you get uh you know everything's normal you do it as a hobby it's kind of fun you're interested in politics and then one day you're canceled from everything you have no other way to go and you sort of get boxed in myself and you and many other streamers on cozy are actually very lucky that it happened when it did uh, cause right now sure, I, I was talking to Gavin about this, you know, the other day, um, how, when he got deplatformed, there wasn't alternate social media. Um, now we can go to Gab. We have cozy to stream on. Um, but you know, even Nick, when he was getting banned, you know, he's losing portions of his audience every time he gets banned. Same with mm -hmm. Beardson. So we kind of hit the jackpot in terms of timing. It really leaves you nowhere else to go. Uh, now, you think I could go work at fucking literally, literally anything else, you name it? I can't work there because 
I do this. <laughs> so, exactly. no other option. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I love it. It's fantastic.